Uh, yeah, good afternoon uh, from my side. So uh, as uh, Detlef already introduced, I will talk about uh, essential geodetic or essential variables more in general. And what I present here is more some, I even added here, personal thoughts. So it's nothing, let's say, which is uh, official uh, GCOS, GP, BPS or something like that. So these are initial thoughts again or repeated thoughts and um, which need to be addressed in the near future. I, I started, I added here these two items which Detlef just explained because I think it's a good, it was really a good idea to go this way and it is also related somehow to these essential variables we will see later. So, uh, so what I did, I summarized a little bit what happened so far. I will not go through all these items, I just wanted to have it included here. Um, so basically, um, roughly six years ago, I guess, uh, Richard started first time to talk about essential geodetic variables, at least it's what I know about. And then it continued on GDOS days to 18. I also contributed something. Then uh, a major point was, or a major meeting was uh, IOGG 2019 in Montreal, <coughs> where Richard uh, also presented various things. Markus Rotacher provided also his ideas about that or his opinions. And I also added something about the gravimetry part. Then the other Chigo days, the recent years, there were additional presentations and always more or less addressing similar questions um, uh, from, from what you see here in red, more or less. And uh, finally, last IOGG in Berlin, um, there was again a few talks, one by Richard and I had also talked about uh, these uh, requirements for gravity missions in the context of geodetic variables and this brought me also a little bit to think about again this whole thing and uh, go towards now this presentation. And this presentation tries at least to provide my answers or at least questions, maybe sometimes answers, not, not too many answers uh, to be honest. Um, but uh, raising the, the right questions is, the, I think, is important now. So first question, what is an essential variable with some sub questions? Uh, second, what is the right level of an essential variable? And third, what variables provided by geodesy are essential? So you can see there's always questions here and I will address in the next slides more or less these questions. So first, what is an essential variable? Uh, we should think about to whom are variables essential. So uh, maybe often you think uh, the, what you observe or what you produce or this product or that product is essential for your work. That is probably true, but is it also essential for others? And therefore we have to really define what is the target group. And in my view, this is marked in blue, so my uh, special uh, contributions here are marked in blue. I would say the global society is the target group and not uh, uh, science or administration or uh, some operational facilities or whatever. So keep that in mind, I think, because that drives a lot of uh, the other questions as well. Then for what are variables essential? This is more or less a continuation of the previous question. So for geodesy or for monitoring the Earth system. And I took again this well-known sentence by Richard, which was cited quite often in the meantime, but I think it still is a valid, a valid statement. And there is one item which says char characterizing the geodetic, geodetic properties of the Earth. But uh, you see geodesy and Earth is here very closely linked. So, uh, and properties of the Earth. So we describe properties of the Earth, which is, uh, in my view, a key word which we shall consider. And therefore, on the next bullet here, I wrote here, the Earth as a whole, uh, but maybe with regional and local refinements, but we are looking on the Earth. So we don't look for uh, some specific geodetic products in terms of essential variables. Then what are the criteria to declare a variable as essential. And this is adapted from the ECV, EOV, uh, so climate and ocean variables uh, criteria. Um, I just uh, uh, renamed the first one slightly. So there has to be relevance. So the variable is critical for characterizing the 
earth system I wrote here. This is my contribution. For the others wrote the climate or ocean, but I write here earth system. Um, feasibility, so it has to be feasible to observe a variable on a global scale. Cost effectiveness, generating and archiving is affordable, so also the technology has to be there to do, to observe and to, to store and process all the data. And I added a fourth one, which is not from the ECV EUV, but which was mentioned uh, by Markus Rothacher in Montreal. And uh, uh, this is about sustainability, which I regard also as very important. So the variable has to be available over decades, not just a snapshot, but it has to be on the longer time scale available. So there are two examples which I want to address, which have been shown already today in the morning. Uh, but I like very much uh, to, to link that to these essential variables. So the first one is about this Genesis mission proposal uh, and the paper, which was uh, is indicated here, and there was this nice figure. And, you, and it's about ITRF at the end. Yeah? So uh, what, what I see here is a lot of Earth processes or Earth system parameters, let's say, whatever you want to call it. So maybe except of the precise orbit, all the rest is, is uh, describing the Earth, behavior of the Earth in what, any, with any respect. So shall we regard now the ITRF, which is uh, all delivering here something as an as a essential variable, in my view, not. I would, I would not regard it as an essential variable, but I would regard that as a, as a geodetic product, which contributes to, to essential variables. And uh, I just named here one term as an essential variable. You can agree or not. Uh, it doesn't matter for the time being. Uh, I'll call it here geometric shape of the Earth is an essential variable, which could includes a lot of items here, which you see here listed in the bottom. So in other words, I would not declare ITRF as an essential variable, but I would declare, let's say, geometry of the Earth as an essential variable, if you, yeah, for example. A second example is about the gravity mission, which was also presented uh, today morning, uh, the magic, for example. Um, and here, what we deliver is temporal gravity field by this mission, or take, you can also take rays or rays following, it doesn't matter. Um, so, but is this, the, is this uh, the essential variable? In my view, not. I again renamed that. I, I took here essential variable, you can agree or not, again, a physical shape of the Earth, or you may call it also geoid, but geoid is less well known. And this is addressing a lot of other items which are listed here below, which are linked to this variable. So you see, we are contributing to many processes or Earth system components, uh, which are listed here, more or less to all of them. So this very nicely shows that we, we address the Earth system more than individual elements here. So these are my thoughts about what is an essential variable? So more or less uh, uh, intermediate conclusion, if you want. Um, so, so first, shall we regard a geodetic product as an essential geodetic variable? So uh, I think in most cases, no, because they are not easy to understand for the society, if the society is our target group. Um, you have seen the previous example. Um, ITRF is, is very important, but Hardly anybody outside of geodesy really understands that completely. So it's not very recognized by non-geodesists, I would say. Therefore, my proposal is uh, we should define variables according to Earth system parameters in a similar sense as it is done for the climate and the ocean variables. So sea level, ice sheets and so on. Uh, you will see in a minute uh, the list the table here about these variables and then you get a better feeling. Then a second question, which I regard also very important, and basically it's the first question in my view, which has to be answered. Shall we use the term EGV at all? So I mean, should we call them essential geodetic variables? Mm -hmm. um, I have some doubts about that, to be honest, because uh, geodesy in principle suffers from visibility in society and it's difficult to promote them. This we also experience with many other items 
uh, when we talk about ge geodesy, usually you are not well recognized by other groups, let's say. Um, so, in other words, what we do, as I said it already, we observe the Earth system as a whole with local or regional refinements. So, therefore, my proposal, at least at this point, is we should not call them EGVs, but I would, now, as an initial proposal, I would call them Earth system or essential Earth system variables and uh, call it EEVs or EESVs, whatever you like. So, this is uh, the first thing I would. Uh, which is needs to be discussed really in detail and it has to be a decision if we go for EGVs or other acronym. So, uh, what is the right level of an essential variable? And here, I, I, in this table, you see basically more or less all of these uh, ECVs, EOVs, and uh, you see also where they are duplicated. Uh, so the black ones, the black entries are from the ECVs, uh, the blue ones are from EOVs, and the re red ones are, uh, are addressed in both, so climate and ocean. You see there's quite a number of duplication, which is not negative yeah, in that sense. So it, it's clear that um, some parameters uh, are for climate and ocean, uh, some are for ocean only or for climate only. And, and what I do, did here, I added these green boxes, which show, at least as in the first assessment, the link to geodetic products, parameters, or geodesy in general. And you see quite a lot. You see also that we are contributing here to parameters which are already addressed by climate and ocean variables, but why not declare them additionally as our system variables? Um, some others which are not listed here maybe are purely from geodesy. I did not make this assessment, but I just wanted to show where we have overlaps and what are these parameters, how they are named. So, um, then what is the right level? That is the initial question. So, the level, in my view, is in a very high level, uh, meaning uh, in a data level, level three it's called. You will see in the next slide what is meant by level three. Uh, but not on observation level. So it's really things which you do here. So sea level is a very nice example of this. So therefore, uh, I would say, yes, we should be equivalent to climate and ocean variables in the sense that we should find similar parameters as they are given here. So here is the definition of the levels. So level three is application variables as I already mentioned, similar to ECVs or EOVs. Um, level two would be models, which, for example, could be a gravity field or ITRF, but not directly presenting an application variable. So you need to do more in order to get to this level three. Uh, level one would be the observations and level zero in principle geodetic standards. So what we need to do first is we should start at level three. So we should go for a top-down approach that we start with level three definitions of these variables and maybe some of them from level two might be needed to be considered but that maybe is the next step. So I would suggest first to start with this level three definitions. It could be also that level one parameters are essential for products. Um, I, want, I don't want to exclude it but we have to see later I would say. Um, and what variables provided by geodesy are essential? This is the third question. So what are these variables? So we have these geodetic products, which have been introduced already uh, several times before in the GIGOS uh, uh, website, where you can nicely do this job. And uh, what I did just, I made one example here. <clears throat> I, I look for an essential variable is called land deformation. Yeah. I think this was also listed before in the in the other parameters. So then if we start with the Earth system components, so we go to, to a subdomain land surface. Uh, so now first we go to solid Earth, lab, subdomain land surface, and then you go to a surface deformation model. And that is the product which is linked to this essential variable, for example. So you see there's a link, but it's not the only one. So there could be more. 
And to define that, we should go for this style, I would say. On the left-hand side, you see how these variables are described in a very simple way, I would say. And on the left, you see how it is done for uh, climate variables. Uh, we call it ECV classification. And I did the same here for, I already named it EEV, so Earth, Earth, essential Earth, Earth system variable. And I took here this surface deformation model. So you can write here the domain, subdomain. But what is important is in the bottom here, you see a number of products. So I don't say this is all products, but it could be more, but it's just an example. And you see the similar thing, what was done here for glaciers, they had here these kind of products which are used. So they mean, this is the link to the pro of the products to an essential variable. And if you do that, you can also create nice, a nice matrix, which product at the end is contributing to which uh, uh, essential variable. I did not do this exercise, uh, but this could be something as another tool or another, another task to be done in the, in the near future, I would say. Just uh, the final question here, what are the requirements for these variables? This is what we also need to address at some point. Uh, so we have to find, identify requirements for spatial, temporal resolution, accuracy, latency, I didn't mention here, but for example, I, I just put one example here for the satellite gravimetry. Uh, and what are the requirements for hydrology uh, based uh, in this time scale threshold uh, target? That means this is resolution and accuracy defining. So it's just an example. We don't need to go into details. Um, but this is what we need to define for each essential variable. And you see, this is taken from the mission requirements document uh, for the magic mission for the future gravity mission. And you see it's driven by the thematic field it's driven by these variables. So in other words, having essential variables, which we can immediately use also from our side, we can uh, make such kind of tables in order to promote also future observing systems like satellites, maybe other things as well. So last slide, what is the way forward? So. I, you already, I think, I uh, realized what, what is the idea. So step one. Uh, step one is uh, a decision if we stay with EGVs or if we define essential Earth system variables or however you want to call it. So who shall decide this? Honestly speaking, I don't know. So there has to be someone has to do that. Um, we can make a proposal, but I think that should be a common decision by geodesy. What is what we want to do? Uh, for sure, there is a disadvantage to make a renaming. Uh, we give up a geodesy in the name, which is our home base. Uh, so I'm not happy to do that, to be honest. But uh, I see no way out to promote them in, in a better way. Advantage, as I said here, just said, better visibility and so on. And a better link to other essential variables. Once we have this decision done, we should develop Go to step two, develop a concept on how to define essential variables. And that we should do with a small core group. And the result of this group should be a roadmap towards definition of essential variables. So there are the, the boundary conditions to, def what, to, to say what, how do we define an essential variable should be, should be written down. And then it should be started to do that. So that would be step three. Step three is then try to define the highest level or level three essential variables and prepare this classification scheme and the matrix, which I have uh, mentioned before, uh, at least for these very high level variables. And then there are more steps to be done, which I don't know how many, therefore step four to X, and we have to define later what is to be done then. So that concludes my presentation and my thoughts. I hope you could follow somehow and you could uh, maybe develop some own ideas and I'm happy to receive any feedback of this for sure. Uh, but we have to start at some point the real discussion and we have to start with the work mostly. This is most important. So far, we were only discussing, proposing, presenting ideas until today. This is also nothing different what I did today, but we have to do real work now. And that is concluding my presentation. Thanks for listening.
Thank you, Thomas, for your thoughts on essential geodetic variables. I think this is uh, very stimulating uh, for, for discussions, and I'm quite sure that there will be comments. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Thomas, this is Harald Schuh speaking. Thank you very much for your thoughts that you presented. And I personally, I can agree with almost all of them that, of course, should be further discussed. But I would not approve uh, the idea to skip the geodetic in the term because uh, if we make it too wide, if we make it too open, essential Earth system variables, then we get hundreds of other uh, topics as suggested as such an observable. For instance, um, in GFZ, for instance, we have so many other disciplines, and all of them claim we contribute to observing system Earth. They, they monitor some chemical fluxes in the Earth, uh, some magma or a lot of issues that we are not interested in. And so I would not make it too wide and too general. I think if we keep the geodesy, geodetic, that's our branding in uh, for our discipline. And I think we should yes. not skip it. No, no, uh, I, I fully understand this concern. Um, I'm, uh, but uh, the problem for me is that, uh, you know, uh, for example, even acquiring new students with ge geodesy, let's say studying geodesy is extremely difficult because nobody knows what is geodesy. Even here in Germany, where we have a very well established geodetic, let's say, community um, and history. Um, and that worries me a little bit. If we, I'm not in favor of Earth system, I know, I, but I have no better idea right now, <laughs> honestly speaking. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it needs to be discussed. We will not find a solution in this uh, five minutes of discussion, maybe. <laughs> but uh, let's discuss it. Maybe we have a, a, a clever, a clever idea by someone, which combines both in some sense. Okay, please, Herman. Yeah. So first of all, Thomas, uh, thank you very much. I would really like your presentation. And I agree with nearly all. And also with Harald, I agree. Uh, there should be the word uh, geodesy because we want to promote geodesy. But I have a problem with the word essential. Because if you use the word essential, on the other hand, you declare all the other variables are not essential. So in this room are for sure people which are working on a variable which you not mention in the list. So please go out, you are not essential, it's nonsense what you are doing. <laughs> so I would uh, quit, but what catastrophe would happen if you only call it geodetic variables? Or you could, if you need another adjective, you could call it selected geodetic variables, but not essential. So then you would say for the ocean, uh, all others are excluded who are not addressing these essential ocean variables or climate. And these are, but having these variables. So we have now this issue that uh, terrestrial water storage is an essential climate variable. So this was a big, uh, big uh, task to do to get this through. So that means essential means this is an important quantity uh, contributing to this essential quantity. Uh, is a different story. So uh, even if someone is observing uh, uh, one point gravity uh, measurement or doing one point gravity measurements, he's also contributing to terrestrial water storage if you want. So therefore people should think a little bit broader and uh, should not feel ex be excluded from from something like that just because they do maybe very local work. Uh, so um, I think if we skip essential, then we, we don't need to do anything. Um. Okay, uh, Richard, please. Yeah, hi, Thomas. This is Richard. Uh, thank you for the very thoughtful presentation. I just have two small comments. Uh, the first is in the United States, we talk about um, Earth system science. And when we talk about that, the Earth system is the atmosphere and oceans and how they interact with each other. It's not the land. So I think it could be confusing if you called 
this an essential or system variable because people might say, well, we already have essential climate variables. Why do we need this? Uh, so I would also be in favor of not using that name. Um, secondly, um, there's an existing club of organizations creating essential variables. And I think we want to join that club. And so I think we need to continue to use the name essential, right? And that puts us on the same level as, as the essential climate variables, central ocean variables, central biodiversity variables, you know, all of the others. And so I do think we need to retain that name. I'm not so sure about retaining geodesy there. I think it's important for the branding, but like you say, it might be uh, less um, um, accessible by the public. But I think that could be discussed. I just subject to Earth system. <laughs> okay, so there's another question. Yeah. Hello, so my name is Milad Askheimer from GFZ and Te Technical University of Berlin. So uh, uh, I, I think it was a really thoughtful presentation and I can understand all these arguments that have been made that uh, geodesy, uh, that we are working for geodesy and also your concern regarding that, that not, give, give, uh, not taking the visibility that we want. So uh, as a, maybe I'm a bit uh, from a younger generation that I entered geodesy. So, and I think I see it really right, the concern that you have that uh, because uh, we have been insisting a lot on the variables that is not sensible by the community or by the students unfortunately we are actually uh, you know uh, 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 we, are, we are not maybe as attractive as we were before so then then I think that maybe one one solution just one comment on this is yeah I think it is really nice idea to have at least the term uh, air system uh, variables, but just to limit it and also to answer to uh, other concerns that uh, uh, other have, maybe we can also add something like geo, uh, geodeti, in, uh, something like uh, uh, um, uh, drive variables in a geodetic approach or geodetic technique. So, but it would be really long, I know, but maybe we should think on this. So just to limit it also and also have to have the both terms. I'm happy to receive any idea or uh, please, uh, if you feel that you have a good idea, just communicate it to Detlef or send an email or whatever. Um, it would be not, it would be really, we need to decide this first, uh, otherwise uh, it's difficult to continue with the work, to be honest. Uh, thanks for your comment. I, I like that uh, also younger people give their opinion on that. <laughs> okay. Thomas, thanks again. So you have seen that you have uh, yes. had a lot of uh, discussion here uh, uh, created by your thoughts and this was really important. And, and I think this discussions need to be dis uh, continued.